All right, so I made a video talking about first versus consistent, the stats, basically breaking down the classes into broader terms, which is basically to set up this video because I wanted to talk about this all in one video, but I thought it'd be too long, so I broke it up. Because now I really wanna go in depth about balance. Now I thought it'd be best to start off with talking about the history or at least how things have been balanced in the past. Now finding a tier list from older times from a reputable source has been pretty rough to find. I wanted to find something pre-revamp, but unfortunately I could not. So this is after the first revamp and the winners of that revamp was Artillerist, Arcana, and Summoner. As you can see, all three of them are right there in the top. But if we look at the top tier, the, the one, all of those are spec first classes. If we look at 1.5, both of them are spec classes. Now CO, Energy Overflow, Rage Hammer is like a 50-50, I think. Wind Fury is not, but still the majority of them are spec and they are mostly burst if they are the spec version. This is how the balance has been and this is how we've accepted it. Now I want to talk about a term that is talked about in the Korean community called a shackle. Now a shackle is something that you have to do, something that gets in your way, something that is a difficulty to get around for your class. So if you have to back attack, that's a shackle. You always have to reposition yourself. Your character speed can be considered a shackle. Having or not having movement skills, that can be part of it. Basically everything I talked about in that last video about difficulty, things that are going to get in your way, that can be considered a shackle or not. If we talk about the Force Bender ESO build that everybody talks about being like super juice, super pump, that build is loaded with shackles. You are a back attack, you are full spec, so that means you're slow, you have zero movement skills, some pretty longer animations, and on top of that, since you have to selfishly use your buffs, you don't have high uptime for the rest of your party. That build in particular is just filled with shackles, but the reward for these shackles is you do a lot of damage if you do it right. And even with that, you can remove one shackle. So you can remove it from being a back attacker. So you can get rid of Ambush Master, you can do get rid of Entropy and run Hallucination. But when you remove that shackle, you are going to do less damage. And it's that train of thought, that way of thinking is why it's come pretty common to accept these in the KR community. You know, class gimmicks, that's another shackle because Surge, you had to do all the stacking on it. Arcana, you had to deal with the cards on it. But obviously that doesn't mean the more difficult the class is, the better it is because, well, Barrage is up there in the number one, which let's be honest, that class has barely any shackles to it. You could say it's slow, but you can cheer up through mechanics. But earlier, say for example, I talked about War Dancer and the Force Bender Easter being full of shackles and doing a ton of damage. Then on the other hand, you have first attention. You could play that non-positional and have really great uptime on it. The exchange for all that is first intention just generally isn't rated high as personal damage goes. It's, it's all right. So I wanted to go over shackles and just talk about why people accept things as the way they are. Now, unfortunately, I don't have a recent tier list to go off of when I want to talk about how things are changing. And the best thing I can do is really talk about patch notes and what people have discovered in KR when they do get these newer patches. And an important thing that has been changing is how they use these shackles. Because now we're getting classes that perform really well that had some of these shackles removed, starting with that first rebalance. One of the big ones is going to be giving movement speed options to a lot of these classes, or even just high swiftness classes that actually are performing really well. Arcana is an example which went up in both specs. So Emperor actually got up. If remember, if you look at ATK's tier list from a little bit after that, it was right under the top three. But more importantly, I'm talking about how Empress actually got tripods to increase its movement speed. This allowed it to run Raid Captain instead of Barricade. On top of that, then they had increased movement speed, so they got rid of one of their shackles while also gaining damage. On top of that, having build variety, because these spec burst classes generally couldn't use a lot of different engraving, but that's changing. Empress was just the start of this. Slayer is another good example of a class that is recently released. Both builds are able to run Raid Cap. Their spec build runs Raid Cap because it gets boost of movement speed when it's transformed. So now you have a high damage burst back attacker with high movement speed on top of it. And now with a recent change, even Glavier can use Raid Captain more efficiently than it could before. The changes to Deadeye is allowing it to, if they want to, be a Raid Captain build, and they can actually even run Propulsion. Well, for Pistolier Deadeye. Now, obviously, there has been classes that are spec classes that can use Raid Captain. Flavor could use it before still, Evo and DI could use it before, but none of those classes really pump. Meanwhile, Punisher, Empress, Pinnacle, those classes are pumping. They're, they're up there. And that's because they're either a new class or they revamped them. But on top of that, they are also lowering the gap, I think, between consistent and burst damage. Because even though Pinnacle went directly to the moon, Control isn't that far behind. And the same can really be said about Arcana. Emperor isn't that far behind Empress, and the same thing with Summoner. Communication Overflow isn't too dreadfully behind Master Summoner. I don't know a damn thing about 
sharpshooter hawkeye but i know those went up pretty high in stocks too i think both builds did overall i think the future of lost ark balance is looking pretty good they're making classes a bit more unique and I do personally think the gap between burst and resistance should be smaller than what it historically has. Been. And so far with these classes, like I said, Arcana, Summoner, Slayer, the gap is a bit lower than it used to be. I've talked about this before and I'm gonna say it again. The hard truth is when it comes to balance, Smilegate does not want everything even. If every class did the same output, if they're all capable of the same things, well, character select would look like this. And that wouldn't be that fun. We'd basically all be the bots we see walking around. We'd all look the same. We'd all do the same. There'd be nothing different and it would be absolutely boring. Smilegate has a clear understanding of where they want classes to be. As players, we tend to look at what we can gauge the best, which is gonna be damage. We wanna be MVP. So we look at damage because that is pretty much the best way to get there on the board. Smilegate on the other hand, they don't care about that. They consider all the other factors of the classes that we don't really think about. They think about utility, they think of like destruction, stagger, everything else they can bring to the fight beyond just damage. And another thing is, you know, our tier list where we place them, what we talk about where they should be, Smilegate doesn't care about that. That absolutely has no effect to them. So unlike our inability to see how much damage is going without meters, they get to see the damage of everything going on. So they have an idea of where things are and where they want to be. And then they have the data from all the players to really decide if the average player is doing too much or too little in comparison to where they desire to be. So again, the best example is going to be Summoner. It's pretty unanimous that Master Summoner is the stronger version. So one would think CEO would get buffed and Master Summoner would get nerfed. However, when Smilegate did rebalance those classes a little bit after the initial rebalance, Communication Overload got nerfed and Master Summoner got buffed. As you can see here, the translation goes, Summoner is currently performing at peak level in the current endgame contents of the last balance map, especially the Communication Overflow, build displaying the highest average damage in endgame content. Since this is more than what we aim for, we reduced the overall skill and damage of Summoner class, but Master Summoner builds are performing not as well as other builds, which is why we adjust the class engraving numbers to slightly boost damage. This is the complete opposite of what people, the high-end players see. So I'm sorry to say, but all these sweaty tier lists, they, they don't matter in Smile Game. They care about the average player. They care about the class as a whole. Now, something to note is all these balance changes, all this revamps, all these new classes, these are all designed or at least being redesigned in balance to work with the upcoming raid. They're trying to get everything up to snuff for the upcoming content because they're trying to change things around a bit. So if your class or anything you want to play has been hit yet, there's a good chance it's going to be because, again, they're just trying to make everything work for the new content. And I think that's a huge thing is because these newer classes, they all feel good. They all feel comfortable because they're designed for the modern content. We have a lot of old dated classes that are getting better and again going back to arcana that one went really straight to the moon with how much people love it now compared to before because it's just more of a modern design it works better and of course it just does a lot of damage now i know there's going to be some doomer slash negative takes on oh they're just doing the rebalances so people will remake those classes juice them up, spend money whale now, that may be so but at least they're making them fun in the process so I think that covers everything I wanted to say. You know, coming from fighting games, tiers and balance has always been a topic that really interests me and something I like to dig deep into when it comes to understanding things. So I hope this video has helped you understand how historically balance has been, what's going on now, and where I think things are going. Because I genuinely do hope that we keep on getting more crazy things with the revamp that really modify a class and really make it shine. Because things I didn't go over is how happy I am for the Deadeye and Flavior change. Deadeye looks extremely fun and might not be a meme class anymore when you're playing Pistolier. While Glavier, on the other hand, they finally get changes to their meters and how that works and completely removes the reason why I dropped the character. So that's all I got for this time. Thanks for watching and, you know, throw me a sub if you want.